And we're live. Good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club meeting for Thursday, November 16th. My name is John Milliker. I'm the club president for the 2023-2024 season. The Arundel Camera Club was founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. For more information about us, please visit arundelcameraclub.org. And a reminder, uh, we are meeting in person. If you are local to the Anne Arundel County, Maryland area, we encourage you to visit us at the Severna Park Baptist Church located at 50. Benfield Road, Severna Park, Maryland. Um, before we move on to tonight's program, do we have any announcements from club officers? Um, no, I just to oh, come on up here, Ed. You need the microphone. Our eagles. Our eagles. Bring your long lenses and experiment. And there'll be a lot of people where... There'll be a lot of people here that can actually get to get, we'll all get together and learn how to how to shoot that long lens, you know. And uh, um, I was wondering if if somebody would like to do a park and drive park and drive. There's a Millers Millersville Park and Ride meet. If you wanted to meet at that place at eight o'clock, you know. Uh, that would be nice to save. You can carpool if you'd like. So thank you for your kind attention. <laughs> thank you, Ed. Ed, if people want to carpool, can they email you and you'll kind of, can you kind of piece people together? Okay. Or how about this? If you want to carpool, I'm why don't you send... I live near here. Oh, okay. So that's a problem. I don't if you want to carpool, send a message to members at arundelcameraclub.org. That'll go out to all the club members, and then you guys can then talk amongst yourselves, find rides, and, and, and all that fun stuff. Ed, what lenses should we bring? The long ones. <laughs> and uh, what time is that? Eight o'clock. Now, what happens if the parking lot is full? I know that parking lot fills up pretty quick. Is there any auxiliary parking for Conowingo? I don't know. Maybe by the visitor center? By the visitor center. Can you walk from the visitor center down to that area? There's plenty of parking. Plenty of parking? Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. Gotcha. Okay. Ed is recommending bring your lunch. There's also that nice little diner with that big tree stump. What diner is that? Do we know? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Within five minutes of there. There's one right on Conover Road. That's a little kind of place. Okay. That's reasonable. Okay. Well, Ed's recommending bringing your lunch, um, or everybody may go and. Uh, Go to the diner that's nearby. <laughs> okay, perfect. If you have any more questions about that, uh, send an email to Ed. If you want to carpool, send an email to members at arundelcameraclub.org, and then uh, that way you can kind of pair up with other people. Um, I see two new people. Could you, would you mind standing up and introducing yourselves? So, hi, Richard. Um, I was a uh, part of the camera club a uh, long time ago, and uh, you know, life happens, and ten years goes by, and it's like, hey, I'm drop in and see what's going on. So, <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome back, Richard. Richard stood up and told us he used to be a member of the camera club, and you, ma'am. Oh, happy loss. I actually live probably five minutes from here. My only camera at the moment is a Google Pixel phone. I, I used to see the meetings and the one that published them in the paper. I always thought, oh, that sounds interesting, but never. Kathy stood up and introduced herself. She said she's got a Google Pixel phone. Uh, there are a lot of people that win contests with with cell phones. We don't talk about it, but they do. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's, uh, let me introduce Christine Millick, our programs chair, to introduce our wonderful speaker for tonight. Here you go, Christine. Good evening. Um, 
our schedule for this next week, I'll review first. As Ed said, we have Conowingo Dam on November 18th as our field trip. On November 23rd is Thanksgiving. So you're welcome to come, but no one else is going to be here. So next week, no meeting. On November 30th is our color and monochrome contest for uh, open um, for the month of November. On December 7th is our is our next contest, which is digital, and it's the theme of craftsmen and artisans. On December 14th is our Christmas party. It'll be at the Hockles. If, uh, an email will go out with directions and an address, uh, and anyone who wants to can participate by bringing a um, gift. How does that work, Christine? Everyone who wants to participate, is it $25? No more, than. no more than $25 gift, and everyone draws a number, and you're welcome to steal from a previous gift if you don't like what you get, or you can just steal to begin with, but then um, a gift can only be stolen twice. Three owners, but twice, yes. And after that, whoever the third owner is, it's theirs. Um, it cannot be stolen again. And there's usually a... Um, booby gift <laughs> that has been passed around the club for many, many, many years. And um, if you get that, then you are obligated to bring it back next year <laughs> for the next round or within the next couple years. But that is our Christmas party and bring a covered dish and we eat and we have a lot of fun that night. Um, on December 21st is um, our next color and monochrome print contest with the theme of craftsmen and artisans again. And then December 28th, there'll be no meeting because of Christmas and New Year's. Did December 7th is the digital contest for used to thinking of digital as being second Thursday of the month. Because of the holiday, it's the first Thursday. Correct. So we moved our digital contest to the first weekend of December because of the Christmas party. And, be, and there will be no programs in December because of the Christmas party and no meetings and to get all our contests in. Um, now I'd like to introduce Fred Venicia, who is our speaker for tonight. He is a club member and has been with us for quite a while, and he is talking about portrait photography. I had to, I had to take the gum out, okay? It's not... <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to try to do certain things, to, uh, try to show you something, and I hope you get something out of it. What we're going to start out with is, you know, when we take a picture... All we have is a two-dimensional type object. You only got height and width. And the way that we get depth in a picture is by shadows and highlights, okay? And I'm gonna show you how I get that, okay? Go ahead, next slide. Hold on a sec, I'm trying to follow you. You're a, you're a mover, Fred. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is how we get shadows. This is called the inverse square law. And you look at it and you say, oh, wow. You know, do we really need to know that? Well, yes, we do, but we don't need a calculator, okay? We don't need a calculator. All we have is the light equals the distance uh, squared by one. Next slide. Okay, and this is, this is how it happens, okay? So if we're here, if this is one foot, every time you double it, you're losing, you're losing, uh, not a quarter, you're losing 75% of that light. That's how you get the shadows. So every time I go from here to here, you see how much I'm losing? See how much I have? I only have 1 16th of that power that came out of that, that flash or whatever it is. And it continues to keep going. In a way, you adjust for course. You you have to turn up your you have to turn up your uh, f stop or do something to make up for that distance. Okay. Next slide. Okay. This is this is done in inches. Okay, of course. And this is of course an egg. And this is how that light falls off. If you look right here, it's at f11. Okay. 
that first one is going to be F22. That's not one stop. That's two stops. Okay? So you have to remember that when the way that light's falling off, that's how you get that shadow, or that's how you get that highlight if you're right on top of it. And you can see as we go down farther, 48 inches, hardly have anything. Any questions about that? I didn't make that up. That's, that's the law of the jungle. That's the law of the jungle, okay? As, as much as you scream, shout, whatever, that's not going to change. Next one. Okay, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about flat lighting, split lighting, Rembrandt lighting, butterfly lighting, and loop lighting. These pictures that I'm about to show you are not taken by me, okay? I will show you later my stuff, okay? Next slide. Okay, flat lighting. The deal with that one, as you can read it, okay, is it's, it's more for a headshot, and that's going to be another, another thing about headshots and in, uh, in uh, portraits, uh, there's something in my, I'll tell you about that later. But anyway, this is normally used for glamour type thing. So in other words, what's happening, if you look at her eyes, okay, the catch light is right here. And it's broad, and there's no, there's the shadows aren't too much. It's just enough, and it's really good to have it in front like that because you cover up wrinkles, you cover up this, you cover up that, because you get rid of the shadows. Any questions on that? Brett, yes. Stay in front of the camera. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the camera needs a little, a little exercise. We're going back and forth. Okay. Any questions on that? So why do they call it good for beauty lighting? Well. Can you repeat the question, Brett? The, the question is, why do they call it beauty light? Why is it good for uh, beauty and glamour? Because it hides all the wrinkles, okay? It hides everything. You're straight on it. Is that because there's a diffuser? Because you would... It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's straight in front of her. It's, it's right in front of her. You know, it's, it's like you can have one on either side. It doesn't necessarily you need one light or you need two lights. Right. You have you usually put them on either side, okay? And that's why, you know, that's what you normally see in a magazine or uh, uh, some beauty, beauty shot. That's what you normally see. Any other questions about that? Well, if flat lighting is good, good for headshots, oftentimes in competitions, the judges will say the picture is too flat. So what types of images is flat lighting not good for? Well, that's, <laughs> that's all in the photographer. OK, whatever that judge says, for him, that's, that's what it is. But for you, it's whatever you want or whatever I want. If I did everything for the, for the judge, I'd win every time. But I do what I want to do. OK, that's, that's my answer to that. Any other questions about it? So your, your flash would be direct, direct right at her? If you're using one. Not up, not up in the air for a reflection, just directly? Yeah, directly. What I would do on this shot is I'd have one on either side and bring them together. But I didn't shoot that. You'll see one of the ones I shoot. Okay. I, did, I did a direct shot of Bob Weber, uh, and it got thrown out because somebody else had one. Somebody else had one right here <laughs> that was prettier. It was. Tell us about the one. Yeah, because it had it had three lights. Mm -hmm. I had a headlight um, to you know pick up all the dark on his head. Then I had the key light, which was the bright flash, and then I had a fill. And so I had 45, 45, and just a highlight, air highlight. But you don't usually use beauty lighting on a on guy a, that has right. distinguished. Uh, he wanted to count all of stuff. his hair. But you see, the thing about her picture was it wasn't flat. It wasn't and flat. what happens, she showed, she showed shadows. Yeah, and by exactly. showing those shadows, it made her picture, oh, made it gave you that 3D. really cool. Right, exactly, and that's what you're trying to do, is you're trying to cause a 3D effect. But this one right here is just for that, okay? Any other questions about that one? Okay, next one. Okay, now, this is a biggie, okay? This is called split lighting, okay? Now, uh, when you use a one-lighter, and the way I use split lighting, it's, a, it's like this, but the giveaway on it is right here on her nose, where it goes separate. Yeah. She added, they added a reflector or something in there because you see the catch light in her eye. Myself, you'll see on mine, what I do with split lighting. 
Okay. Now, what that does is, is it, it gives it more of a dimension like her picture did. Mm -hmm. And that's why split light. Go ahead. Can you point out where the, the two lights are coming from? Well, actually, it's only one, and they're using a reflector. But you see on her, her catch light right here? Okay. See two catch lights? Something tells me it's over here. Let me grab. Could you have some water? So they used a reflector to. I don't know what they source. use. Yeah, they, you can use anything. You don't have to use one. You could add another light over there. All you have to do is just make sure that light is not higher than your key light. Okay. But I didn't shoot that. But I'm just assuming they used a reflector or something because you see on her shoulder here how dark it is here. Yeah. They had it up. That's my my opinion. The reason they. The reason the right side is darker is because the light has traveled a greater distance from the source and bounced off the reflector. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. Could you describe what, the, what where the flash is, the reflector, and all this stuff? Well, I, did, I could do it on mine because I know where I set it. OK, but, but on this one, what happens is the light, if you notice her, her eye right here, the, the catch light is at 10 at uh, 10 o'clock, that's perfect, OK? So, the so flash is off, to the side. off to the side, it's at 90 degrees, it's up, at, it's up above her head, OK? And it's, and it's coming down oh. at her, OK? And that's what's causing that split light. But what they did with this one, and I'll show you on mine where I don't do it, OK, is they put something here to give it just a little bit of light. Now, they could have done it in Photoshop, they could have used this, but you know, that's, that's the thing on it. Any other questions about that? Next one. OK, this is called Rembrandt lighting. OK, and Rembrandt lighting, OK, you know, you can use as many lights as you want. I'm going to show you a picture of mine where I use, well, I'm going to show you a picture that was Rembrandt lighting. You add light to it. And that's what they did here, OK? And what that's a giveaway here is a triangle right here on her on her eyes, on that left eye, you see it? And what you're doing is you're moving that light around until her nose covers that. Then that's called Rembrandt lighting. Now, you could use a whole bunch of them, but to get that right there, you have to have your key light on the nose because the nose is the one that's causing that shadow. And I'll show you, uh, I'll, I'll show you one later. That, key that the key light is something that comes from the top. That's a very, well, it's, it's, it's the highest power one. I'm sorry. The main brighter. The main it's the main light. Yes. I'll, I'll call it main light. Why do we call it Rembrandt? Because of this triangle. No. Try again. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> who, was, who was Rembrandt? I don't see any triangle. Who was Rembrandt? Oh, he was. Just remember to repeat their questions. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, but I don't, know, I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> oh, the answer is because that's in most of his portraits. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My, he got me. <laughs> okay. Can you point out the triangle for him because he doesn't see it? Right here. You see it? See the, the coming across there? I didn't take that picture, but that's it. Okay, so it goes here. When you get to mine, you're going to see it. It'll, it'll be great. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Could you see it? Next to the nose. Do you see the triangle on the side of the nose? So they did. They brought the light in here, and she's moved, they're moving the light. You're looking ahead, and it's getting to a point. Oh, I see, I see the shadow going across there, and it closes it. OK? It just so happened in that picture, they added more light. They, it looks like they probably had uh, some type of reflector or something, just bringing it back, bouncing or something. They did something to it. Yeah. Is it because Rembrandt placed his subjects close to an open window, which is a broad source? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, okay. That's the Dutch. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a historian. I, I just. I just know they call it Rembrandt writing because he did that. That's true. But they have a triangle down there. But that's that's where they come up with it. Okay. I, I don't really know. Any other questions about that? <laughs> <laughs> that I can answer. <laughs> You're making it work, right? Yeah. Okay. Next one. OK, now this is called loop lighting. OK, and what the, the way you get this loop lighting is the light source is right here. You see the, you see the catch light in the eyes? Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock. 
And what's happening is they're moving it back and forth until they get just a little bit of that shadow on her nose. Her nose coming down. That's why they call it loop lighting. So it's usually symmetrical. That's another one. But yeah. anyway, that's, that's what they call it. Okay, that's another type. Any other questions? So where's the second light coming from? I don't know what it's doing, but they got one light here, yeah. okay, and it, they have it angled in such a way, like I said, I didn't shoot it, but they're causing, they're causing that shadow to be on her nose down like that. That's why they call it loop lighting. Okay? You see what they have? The main light is at 30 to 45 degrees because they're moving it around until they get that. They're, they're keep moving it, moving it. Oh, it depends on the person. You know, it depends how the nose is. You know, it just depends. Yeah. And you have How to move it around. What's that? How's that different how is than that rim? different from the Rembrandt? The Rembrandt light is going to have a, a triangle up here. Okay? And the, and the light's going to be a little bit higher. I'll sh I have to show you on mine because mine's like, okay, now I see what you're talking about. Okay. Any other questions about that? Next one? Okay, this is, this is the light I really like, okay? This, this is a butterfly lighting, AKA Paramount lighting. This was a type of lighting they used at Paramount Studios, okay? And the way this light is taken, because she's looking down, she's looking at this, she's looking at that, you could put a, you could put a reflector down here to take care of that. But the thing about it is, right up underneath here, it's right underneath her nose. And that's what made Paramount lighting, or that particular lighting, so popular at Hollywood. And I'm gonna show you a picture that was taken in 1972 with Paramount lighting, then you'll see what I'm talking about. But that one, that one is, uh, I, I love that type of lighting. Okay, and how you shoot that is you just shoot with the light right in front of her like this, up high, and right underneath the light. And that's how you get that. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Yeah. You said in the flat light, and you also, your light is also in front of the subject and slightly above. Right. So how is that different from the butterfly light? Well, when you see mine, you'll see it. But her eyes are closed, her eyes are down. You'll see the light right in the center of her eyes. You'll see that, you'll see the reflection right in the center. And I'll show you one in just a minute. Okay. Can, can, can you explain the angle of the um, light source a little bit more to get that? Basically? It's right in front, like this, straight on, uh -huh. slightly up, okay? And you are taking the picture underneath the light. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, next one. Okay, this particular picture was shot in 1972. This was shot on film. In this particular picture, when I took it out of the box, it was in color. And when I turned it to black and white, that, that's what caused that. And if you see, the, you see the catch light in the eyes, it's straight on. That was, that was done on film. It was shot about night, it was right after Uncle Sam come looking for me, <laughs> okay? But anyway, that's my mother and father, okay? Okay, now, now I wanna show you something else while we're on that. This particular picture was taken of my uh, grandson. Yeah, okay. This particular picture, I took this picture. And this was shot in the garage. And yeah, the Rembrandt writing is almost there, but I didn't care because it was my, me, okay? And uh, if you notice the light, catch light, is right on his, at 10 o'clock, okay? Okay, and what I did is in my garage and I put a light behind him shooting like this. And I was able to get him. It, it, came, up on the, it came up on the screen, okay? And anyway, that's the picture. Any questions about that? I'm gonna tell you how I got inspired by that picture. So the light was behind the boy? No, it was on the side and I, I didn't know what I was, I pushed it. It was like he was right here, there's two lights. There's one here and there were also uh, with seven inch reflectors straight at it like this. Okay, and then one was at him. Okay. Okay. Now here's the next one. This is what inspired me about this picture. Okay, this picture 
of course, was done on film, but this picture was taken 60 years ago. And this is what I'm talking about with Rembrandt lighting. What happened is if you see the hand right here, remove the hand for a minute and you'll see that I got a triangle right on my uh, eye, okay? That was done in about 10 minutes, okay? If I, I was only 11 years old. And that would inspire me, that would inspire me to take that picture. Okay? Now, what he did here, as you can see, he put two lights, but he had one behind me. This picture is actually bigger, but it's, you know, over the years, it, when I was in the Army, <laughs> a couple after my mother died, everybody had this picture, and they finally gave it to me. They finally told me, come get your stuff, that okay? You? Yeah, that's me. I was 11 years old. You were so cute. <laughs> 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 okay, next one. Is that one flat lighting? And this one is Paramount lighting, loop lighting. Okay, now, this is me at the graffiti warehouse. You're pretty. Yeah, okay. Now, when you set up, when you set up your lighting, okay, you have light like this, you got a light, you see how much light is going on in there? Okay, and what you have to do is you have to set your camera in such a way that you kill all that light. Next picture. You see how I killed it? And the way you kill it is you turn on your camera, okay, and you get a zero on there where it's completely black. So from that point on, you are control of the light. Nobody else is. If there's a mistake made, it's on you. You can't blame anybody else. Any questions on that? Well, you make it black. What you do is like what I normally do when I shoot something like that, I start at eight. 250 on top of my sink speed, and if I took a picture, it'd be black. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, I don't normally go down, but I can get away with going to five, six, and still have it black back there. But I start at eight and work my way up. Okay, and I usually start with one light, and then a second light. Any questions on that one? Okay, next one. Okay, this particular picture was taken at the graffiti warehouse and I was testing my lights out. And what happened was, uh, she has white hair and I had a white background, I always shoot with a white background. When I, I took my first shot and I said, oh my God, the hair is blending right in with the white backdrop. Okay, so I quickly took my lights, put them forward like that, where wouldn't it, because of the inverse square law, then I was able to darken that black out and take her picture. And then, she did such a good job, I cut off her elbow. In Photoshop, I just added it, okay? <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? But that's the way AI is, okay? Any questions? Well, you know, you can take another picture and I can put it in there, but just faster, just done, yeah. Any other questions about that? Next one. When you show us these pictures, can you please describe where the where the flashes are, how many there are, a more detail about the flashes. Okay, I okay, took it. okay. This particular, okay, this one's a piece of cake, okay? This one was taken with one light and one uh, softbox, and it was taken in 2015, as you can see in his, his glasses. That's where it was. That particular picture won the very first time we had uh, Merrill MPA. Okay, but that's the way that thing was shot. When I shot that picture, I was using a camera that was, uh, it had no mirror. It had a mirror, but it was a see-through mirror. In the, in the, and I only had, it had 180 clicks on it, it was brand new, and the sensor was dirty. I'm going, how in the heck could that happen? But anyway, we took care of that problem, and then we understood how the camera worked. Any questions on that? It's a nice photo. Yeah. Well, thank you. We got a lot of a lot of miles out of that thing. <laughs> yeah, it was a color picture. And his his mother, what happened was, his, he's only like 12. His mother was standing right next. His mother asked him something. And as soon as she, he went like that, but those glasses were all different colors. And it was a, it was a it was a, a mess. It was, but you know, I just turned it black and white, and then I said sip a tone. And then what happened is I just wow, <laughs> that's really you know I really liked it. Mm -hmm. 
it was actually a pretty good sized picture, but I just cut it down. Okay, next one. Okay, now this is a graffiti warehouse, and this is a one lighter. Okay, you'd call this split lighting, and it is one light, and that the light is setting right here. Okay, and there's not enough light to push it past because you're so close. The closer you get to the light, the faster it's going to fall off, just like it. Uh, inverse square law. All right. I like the picture, but I like the other one better. That's why I didn't choose it. Okay. But she was just so happened. The big thing about this is she was wearing glasses, and I had her in such a way that you couldn't get it. Plus, I was using a uh, one lighter, but it had a it had a grid on it, and the grid is the one that caused it not to take off on you. Okay. And as long as you're close to it, that thing's gonna fall off real quick. And I mean close, you gotta be like this, okay? Any other questions about that? So that was a strip box, huh? Uh, yes it was, yes it was. Yeah, yes it was, with a grid on it. Are you using the panels, straight panels? Or You're right, panels? Okay. straight, it's, I have it this way. Then I'm gonna show you a picture where I put it this way, but anyway, I put it this way and it had the grid on it. Oh, she wants to know what type of uh, softbox, how the softbox was, and it was elongated. That's how it was. Any other questions? Next one. Same, same model, same thing. All we did was add a light. And there's another strip box right here. The big thing about this picture is because of her glasses. To get those glasses not to shine, you can fix it in Photoshop, but it doesn't do a good job unless you do it. You know, when you're looking through your camera, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, turn more. And then, then, you know, with the lights I have, they cycle pretty quick. And you know, the big thing about using flash is that because you own the light, because there's no other light, that flash becomes your shutter. And the higher the light, the faster that thing's gonna go, okay? So your duration is actually causing it because you're on the top of your sink, and both of them are, both your uh, doors are open, okay? And it's black. So when it fires, it's gonna be sharp. Any questions about that? Okay, next one. Okay, this is a headshot. This, a headshot can be a portrait, but a portrait cannot be a headshot, okay? Why is that? Because you're only shooting like this, and you're not shooting straight on. Or you're shooting straight on, but it's because you're only getting here up. Portrait's usually down a little bit lower, okay? Now, this is split lighting, and I chose that light to cut him right in half, okay? The judge thought it was a mistake, but that's just the way he is, because he doesn't know, okay? If you don't know the lighting, you're gonna say, oh, pff, something wrong. But the thing is, I liked the way that picture looked. And I liked the way he looked at me, and I hit him good. He liked it, everybody loved it, except the judge. Oh well, <laughs> next one. Any, oh, any questions on that? No questions, next one. Okay, this particular one was shot at the graffiti warehouse, and it was shot with a 48 inch octa with a grid straight on, high, and uh, one light. Straight and of course- Straight on to her? Uh, yeah, it's, it's like, just like this. But I'm having her turn toward the light in it, but basically we're right on her like that, okay. okay? And because it's got that grid on, it's not going everywhere. It's just going in a straight line, okay? So that's why we're not getting anything. We're just getting her, that's it. That's all we wanted on it. Any questions? Yeah. This light was, if she was the model, if she was the model, I, and I, you're the photographer, and you got the camera right here, okay, she would be turned like this, and my light would be right here. That's what would happen. Any other questions on that? I like that idea where you have, where you actually demonstrate it after, after the picture, you actually demonstrate with her. Oh, okay, I, I'll do it. But it just takes a lot of time, that, and you don't want to hear all that, that mess, huh? It emphasizes everything. Okay. So we can understand it. I was thinking about bringing a big light and show you where I put it, but is this too much? 
Okay, next one. Okay, now this particular guy, you know, the best way I can describe this guy is this is the guy, the four guys that uh, Rod Stewart talked about. Some guys got all the luck. <laughs> Some guys got all the pain. Some guys do nothing but complain. <laughs> okay, but anyway, he's, he's got to be, he, he, you know, he just stands in front of the camera and he's gonna make me look good. And I tell him that all the time when I see him. Yeah, and this was done with two strip boxes. But the strip boxes were like this, okay? They weren't, they were like this. I don't know what to call it, but I put it this way. One on each side, but it's long ways. And it's out in front of him, right? If you look at his, if you look at the catch light, you see where it's coming here? And then of course my one in front, okay? Yeah, straight on and high. No, no, you see, you see the catch light? You see the catch light? You see the catch light? It's up high. They want me to stand here and you show them. Okay, there was two lights here. There was one light here, one light here, and there was one light back here, about like so. Oh, three lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I do five, but most of the time it's just two. But he's got a shatter down the center of his nose. Yeah, that's my, that's my mistake. Oh. But I still like it. I mean, I could take it out. I was going to say, you did it on purpose. You played with the lights just right. No, nah, it's more luck than anything else, to be honest with you. <laughs> just a little bit so that they overlap and they really fixed it. Yeah, could have been better. But I, I like the I like the eyes with the with the, uh, the, the shine on each on each end. Yeah. I think that really adds to it. But when you're young and handsome, I guess it's, but it's okay. But the shadow draws you into the photo. So. <laughs> but but again, you know, this is a headshot, and when I took that shot, it was a full body of him, okay? And I cut that on purpose like this, okay? And I cut this like this, okay? It was a it was a picture of him, from here to there, the whole body. Okay, and I just chose that to cut it that way. Any other questions? Yeah. What's Graffiti Warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> it's a place that I've been going since 2012, okay? Can you and organize I don't know, she hangs out, the person that owns it, she hangs down in Miami, and she only comes, she's so not gonna have another shot until uh, January, I think. We can wait, we can wait. Is it a museum? Go back to the very first one, where I showed the light. Yeah, that's a graffiti warehouse, okay? So now, were, each person comes to do pictures, rent, pay some money to make use of it? Or? No, no, what happens is I pay 30 bucks and everybody else pays 30 bucks, any photographer, and I was tired of taking pictures of the graffiti, so I said, I'm gonna get me a white backdrop. So I put a white backdrop up and everybody would walk across it and get all dirty and I'd be going through paper like it's going out of style. Then I had a bright idea of just putting some floor down there four, eight foot, and then cut it in half and then fix it in Photoshop and clean it off, then I have that light coming up, okay? And that's how I was able, so I can use the same. That particular piece, I could have used it again, but I left it. I said, hmm, I'm tired of hauling it home. So I left it. But that's, that's where we, that's the graffiti warehouse. The bad, bad section of Baltimore, yeah. Are those the strip boxes you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. That's the strip boxes we had right there. Those are the ones I use. I got to gut it out because I wanted to, and I'll show you another picture. That I'm using that as a light in the back to make it white. Okay. Any other questions about the graffiti warehouse? <laughs> I like it. I remember when they used to do it three times a month, you know. But anyway, I learned a lot down there. Okay, now this particular picture was taken five, six years ago, I don't know, down to Graffiti Warehouse, okay? And what we did here is we wanted to have the white backdrop. And remember old Chip, he always had a, he had a studio, and he's the one that taught me about, hey, we, we need to do something with this light. How do you do this? And he showed me how to do it, and I picked it up, and, and at first I wasn't worth the darn, but after a while I can do it without too much Photoshop. But the whole objective here was to make these white, so when it sets in a magazine or sets on, on Facebook, it's the same color Facebook, it's white. So you just see it right straight across, okay? And then, you know, everybody wears what they want to wear, okay? And so you can see I used two lights, two uh, uh, octas, 
And of course, my strip lights were hitting the, light, hitting the background. Any questions on that? Your exposure for that one, so you, you always said you go to black. You, right. How would you want it, if it's going to be a white background? No, you're still black. You start out black. You add the light to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't, because if I start turning that down, I'm going to start getting the lights in here, yeah. yellow and green and everything else. And I want it white, so what I have to do is I have to start out with the black. And so from that point on, that's when I start adding the lights to it. And so what you want to do is you want to make this about half a stop less than your main light. About. <laughs> If you go too far, what's going to happen is the light's going to start coming around and she's going to look real foggy. It's going to, the light's going to start coming around on her and you have to be very careful with that, okay? And then what you could do, what, you know, if you're in a small studio or you're doing something, you could put black, black panels on both sides to keep that light from coming or just move her, or just move her this way if you've got the room. Any other questions? Distance from the background plays in this. A lot. Okay? If I'm too close, this light is going to start coming around on her. Okay? So I have to move her. I get this, and I make sure my key light is higher than this. And I move her until I get it right. For the people online, the question was how much does distance of the model from the background play into this? Uh, a lot, okay, and a lot. And if if you go back to that very first one, okay, that very first one I showed, you see the distance. What I'm talking about. Okay, you see the distance between there. See how much distance in between there? That's about what it takes. Was that about three feet? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, each one of these panels are four feet. These are four feet, that panel, four of them. Okay, so, and then it's a little bit from there, so, yeah. The about four feet. Was, was that about three feet? But that's what I use. If you notice, my, uh, my grids are down because I was using it for something else. I'm using it to light that. Because I don't have back panels on there. What about use of the umbrella and on the left side? Yeah, this is this is actually an octa. I don't I don't use umbrellas too much, and you can see I need to replace it. But I have two two 48 inch octas, and it causes that with grids. I have the grids. If you see the grids hanging, because I'm not using it at that particular spot. Any other questions about how the distance is between that? But it does play a big dis distance. Okay, next one. Okay, when you're shooting with two people, it's a little harder, okay? And what you have to do, again, like I'm shooting with that white thing, because if you shoot completely white, it looks like they're just standing there as far as I'm concerned, okay? So I want this shadow coming back on them. I want to see this. So what's happening is that light's bouncing ever so slightly and causing that, okay? That's how I like it. Is it the right way to do it? Probably not. Okay, but that's the way I do it. And it's, it's a little difficult because she has glasses on and, she, and she's known for those glasses. So you can't have them say, take your glasses off. You know, they don't go for that. Okay, so you gotta have, you gotta put them in such a, such a spot. But you know when you see it, wh what it's gonna do because you got the modeling lights on. Of course, I, you know, that's a big thing, the modeling lights. Go ahead. So what can you do to get rid of the shadows if you didn't want the shadows in front? I put another light in there. What another can you light? do if I you put another light right want here. to get rid of the shadows? Was if the I question. wanted to make that completely white, I'd just put a light right there, shine on it. You know, I have bunches of lights, okay? I just, you know, that's one way to get, that's the way I would do it. I don't think I, sh I don't think I have a, I don't think I showed you a picture where I have, well, go ahead, look at the next one. Okay, this is one. Again, th this one is a little different. This one is, the light is on top of her, okay? And I'm gonna show you what happens. What happens with this is you see the catch lights. She was underneath the light, down, 
and I wasn't getting enough light. So I pushed two lights on top of her, you know, right next to her like this. Then I was able to get that like that. I'm not a real big fan about it, but the reason I, I showed, wanted to show you that is how those lights, when you want it white like that, and how I use those two extra lights. So you're talking four lights, five lights on that one, okay? To get that on. But the thing is with the inverse square law, you have to be very careful because if you blow this out, you get it too bright here, and I'm gonna show you with that little thing right here, the light's gonna fall so quick that this is gonna be dark, okay? So you have to bring something in to light, light it up. Any other questions? Next one. Okay, this particular picture was taken a bunch of years ago, and it was taken at Chip Studio on one of our trips, and most of you remember it, okay? Now, the thing I liked about this picture is he's wearing a black shirt, okay? And he has a black background, okay? It was black. And when we set it up, we said, oh my God, it's, it's showing, it can't see his shirt. So Chip threw a light over top of him, okay? And angled it such a way that you got light on his shirt and it separated it, okay? Any questions on that? That's why I liked it. He's up in Maine now, right? I don't know where he's at. I seen him on Facebook a little while ago, but, oh, you know, Brian, Brian yeah. Brian, yeah, he's a club member. Yeah, he's still a club member. I see him online. But that, that particular one was taken at Chip's studio many moons ago. <laughs> but I, I just liked it because of the way that light was. Okay. Where were your other lights on this one? Well, we had two of them like this on either side. And then we had one over top of them. That's what gave them that. The hair light, and also lighten up the shirt where it wouldn't be against the black. Because it wasn't for that light, you wouldn't be able to tell a shirt from that back. The question was, where were the lights? Okay, now, this particular model's made me look real good, okay? This model is a professional, as far as I'm concerned. She makes her own clothes. She, what I have to do is I have to take the picture. And we were doing old Hollywood, okay? And I don't have any finale uh, lights, and that's like what he called, so I had to do something. So what I did was I used uh, seven inch reflectors, and then I used a grid on the seven inch reflectors to cut the light down to keep it from going everywhere. Because if you have a, if you have a, a a grid on, if you have a, a light and it's back here like this, that light's gonna spread out all over the place. Okay, and I need it like this, okay? That particular one, I don't think I want anything with that, but I like it, okay? I, I, I think the, I don't, know. I don't know, I don't even think I entered it, I, I don't remember. Any questions about that? So you had a grid on the reflector? Yeah, uh, uh, what do you call it? It looked like... like a, a I'll show you. No, I didn't have Fresnel lights. No, not a Fresnel light, but you had a go. Had a the question was, was there a grid on the reflector? That's all part of it. Okay, this is what I was using. These are... Uh, this is about a 30, I guess. This is a 10, okay? These are, these are, these are the things that are used instead of for nail lights. Put it in here, straight on the thing, and that's how you can control that light, okay? I got several of these, I haven't used them in a while, but that's what I use. This particular one is a 10 degree, so barely anything's coming out of it, but it's definitely not going all over the place, okay? Okay, next one. <coughs> This one, we did win something on this one, okay? And that was done at the graffiti warehouse. And uh, she, she made all her clothes. She made everything, okay? And I had her in such a way, turn the light, and she knows how to turn her head a certain way. She knows where the light is, okay? I wish I had shown you the picture of somebody took of me taking that picture. Then you would say, how in the hell did you get that? Did you Photoshop it? No, what we did was use stuff like those reflectors to do that, okay? Any other question? It's two of I think I used three, because I used one here, because question. those things hardly have any power to them. 
The question was how many lights I were believe, used? It's been a bunch of years ago. I used three, if I remember correctly. I don't know, I, I, I forget now, but this front one, because you see this light right here, this one coming here, yeah. was here, and then I had one up high for her hair, okay. and then I had one over here to show her face, okay? Because you'd like to have her face in the picture. You know what I mean? Got this habit. Any other questions? Next one. Okay, this particular picture was shot with a gobo, but it was actually uh, Venetian blinds. We used, uh, I used uh, a reflector similar to this, just like this, I think maybe my bigger one, okay? And uh, when you set a gobo here, if you set that right there and she's there, you go like this, nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna have to bring that light all the way back here to get through it like if there was a car. So you lift it up and go back and forth until you get it. And that's what I did on that particular picture. That background is the one I had here and it's blurred out and that's just the way it was. Any questions on that one? Next one. Okay, this guy. Uh, I took this out, I darkened it, and then I took it out and I wanted it back in because it looked, it looked he had leather pants on it, it just looked like nothing. But I really liked the picture. The judge liked the picture too. Any questions on that? That was one light. <coughs> Long ways with the, with the, uh, but he, he's 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 going to turn out to be one of my favorite uh, models because that guy he he knows his stuff. <laughs> All I got to do is take the picture. Next one. Okay, this one was done at the graffiti warehouse. Same background as the other one there, and we were I was testing. Uh, I don't know. She was just sitting there, and and I used a couple lights on it, and uh, it was a oh by the way, take my picture, and I just took the picture, and I liked it. Okay, then uh, I used two lights on that. Next one. Do models just show up? Yeah, they 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 they're they're uh, how should I say? Uh, oh uh, yeah, for prints, but uh, they usually ask them for free. They come in, they just want their picture taken. Okay, and there's people like me who want to take it. You know, that's what it boils down to be. Okay, and and it just so happened because I, I have a full set. You know, where I got a bunch of lights, they just gravitate to that thing. The Everybody question was about the models and how they go to the graffiti warehouse. Yeah. Okay, this is a, this particular picture, the reason I'm showing you this one is you gotta be very careful when you're using studio lights or light, and it's called uh, high-speed sync, okay? Now, when you use a high-speed sync, I couldn't use it there, because if I used high-speed sync with my flight, I could take marshmallows out and start using it because it takes so much power and it pops it so much, okay? So what you have to do, because I'm shooting down at two points, you know, 2.8, it's a bright light out there, okay? It's gonna cause my shutter to go off the top. Okay, if I go in high speed sync, I might be shooting at 2,000. It ain't gonna cut it, okay? At least with my lights, it ain't gonna cut it. So what I did with her is I took uh, an MD filter a medium MD filter. Turned it until I got this somewhat in folk, uh, light, the way I wanted the light, okay? Then what I did is I took, moved her in such a way that I used the sun to light this side of her, okay? Then because now I'm down below my sink speed, okay, I'm able to use my flash very high, my, flat, my uh, uh, speed light. So I had the speed light on there, bingo. There we went. It was a full, it was a full picture, and I cut it down because I just liked her. So I was the big thing was, is her sunglasses. You know, we shot that in August, I guess. Any other questions? Well, basically that's about it. Any other questions? I'm going to show you something on this, and then we'll call it a night. Oh, you know, somebody wants to know how you shoot eagles, and I brought it by the camera to show you. Okay. Now, on this particular one. Uh, Let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay. Now. You can turn the lights on. Just to show you how this thing works. 
how, how uh, uh, the inverse square law works. Okay? From the table, that's about 12 inches. Okay? So if I take this picture, let's see what I got. Camera coming alive. Oh, it didn't flash. See, it's black. Okay? So that's what you want. Let me make sure this thing's on. Okay. So we take the picture, and this is what we get. Okay? And what happens here is because because what's happening is because the light is falling off so quick. You see how high I'm on there? I'm at 13. If I could go up here on the, on the shutter at 250 and it'll still sink. Even with that one, I could probably go up 320 because it's not so bright. So when I do a meter reading, okay. We have a question from online for you, Fred. Yeah. JC asks, what is high speed sync? It's when you go past your uh, think speed on your camera. Most cameras, and he, he's asked, most cameras are anywhere from 160 to 250. New ones, if you all want to take a collection up for me, they make one that I don't have to worry about it. Okay, it only costs $6,000. So if you guys want to buy something for Christmas for me, <laughs> it's called a Sony A9 III. Party. It'll be one of the gifts. Okay, thank you. <laughs> But it doesn't come out till January. Long and narrow. <laughs> I missed the joke. Say that again. You said it would be long and narrow. <laughs> well, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. Okay. So that says 13. This says 13. Okay? Everybody see that? Yeah. Now watch what happens. See how far it went down? Now it's a 10. That's how, that's how the light falls off so quick, okay? That's how it works. And then what you do on that particular picture, okay, if you wanted, if you wanted this, more light coming on, what you would do is just raise that thing higher. So if I raise this thing to 24 inches, okay, Watch what happens. See, it's a lot darker. Okay. So if I take my meter, now, but, but the big thing about it, you see the light starting to come down here? Okay. And on that one, not as much. See, I get more light down there. I think, <laughs> but anyway, that, that's what we get. So what we do to make that to come in, come in real good, is uh, put it right there on the head. Six three. So I brought this thing down to six three. There you go. Piece of cake. Huh? All you need is a light meter? No, you don't need a light meter. I just have it. Okay, that, that's basically all I have. Any questions? Yeah. All I have is two umbrellas <laughs> and three speed lights and two umbrellas. What do I need to do to get these wonderful pictures? 
Very easy. It's right. very easy to do. Practice. You're right. Practice. But uh, first, get Bob to pose for you. Yeah. <laughs> this right here seems to work very well for me. Okay. This particular this setup. Okay. With this setup, I can put a. You know, I could put it on a. Oh, you uh, put that on front of your speed light. Yeah, and then you have different attachments to it. Like you know, I could use this. Okay, I could, uh, if you want to get really, really crazy, these are uh, pretty inexpensive. This is a, a soft box, it doesn't really cost that much. It's already together. When we're ready to go, yeah. okay? And that seems to work pretty well, okay? Then you can get fancy and uh, throw this on. And uh, this is what I want to show you that really helps out when you're uh, to explain how this thing works so well. this does is this channels the light. You say, well, how in the heck does it channel the light? Well, here's how it channels the light. If you can see white, the light's gonna come to you. It's gonna see you. When it starts moving, you start seeing black. When you see the black, it's not coming towards you. And that's how you adjust it. So if I have somebody standing there, they're gonna take a picture, I get them close to it like this. Now I just feather that the way I want them to do it. And away you go. With this right here, I could probably shoot two or three of those things. Take a picture of you. This is very inexpensive. And you can see I haven't used it in a while. It worked very well. Got any questions? Let's, let's, let's put you up there. Let me see if I, get you right here. Let me see if I can do it. Let me see if I can do it. I'm gonna get you right here, get you real close. I might have to play with this a little bit. Come on, real close, right here, stand right here. Real close, come on in. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've got, okay, that's good. Now look toward me, look toward me. Come in closer, let's see what we got. Let's see what I got here. Yeah, no, I took it off for it, because if I put it on, you can't see it. See what we got here? We're getting it.
There we go. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to turn toward that light now. We know no. You stay right there. I'll move the light. I can use uh, a lot of the stuff that I have. I just have to add this. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. See, oh. Fred, what is that called? Oh, look at that. There oh. we go. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Now, now this is where you got to be careful. You see this? You see the way this light is over here? If we had turned that light off, I couldn't get it down low enough. Yeah. Was that clear? Yeah. Okay. 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 Y
Okay, if I take that and put it back down, see what happens? 24. Yeah, so what happens is it brings that light and puts it all the way back, mm -hmm. and then it causes that light to go out farther. You've seen that before? Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, where it says, see where it says 24 on there? Yeah. Or 24? When I yeah. pull that out, it's 14. Mm -hmm. And you can hear the, you can hear it. Yeah. You hear it? Yeah. So it's going back and forth. Yeah. So when you're using one and you really want a lot of light, just pull it out. But of course, when you use a lot of light like that, it's gonna, it's only a speed light, okay? Yes, this will go high speed sync, but you can burn them up because it takes such, such power. Because what it's doing is it's, uh, it's flickering. And it takes a long time to recycle. Any other questions? Yes, can I ask a question? Not yeah. going to do it long time. Okay, good. <laughs> so now you've taken the photo and you've taken it into Photoshop or Lightroom. Can you give us in three minutes just a couple of things that you have to do to your photos? Because mm. I've got all the photos from the, from the portrait night and I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay, well, first off, those ones that I did like four or five years ago, those were all JPEGs, okay? Uh, all the ones that I shot at the, the dam, with the exception of this year, they were all JPEGs, okay? Why did I shoot, well, why did I do it? Because Fred did it. Okay, now I, I shoot both back and forth or whatever, but now I'm kind of leaning toward raw, okay? I used to shoot raw at the very beginning, and I was shooting raw and JPEG, and I realized, why am I making my JPEG, my raw look like my JPEG? Why don't I just start with the JPEG? The big thing is, if you get it within one stop, it doesn't matter what it is, you can make it work, unless you're gonna, unless you're gonna do something like, put a whole bunch of stuff to it. But mine, I normally don't put a bunch of stuff to it. And what I do is I bring it into Photoshop, it goes into Lightroom, and then I'll adjust what my aperture, you know, what, what kind of light I want on it. Okay, you know, if I want it brighter, darker. And with today's uh, Photoshop, especially Camera Raw, because that's where it goes in, it's just like Lightroom, okay, is you're able to pick the subject out, or you're able to pick the background out, you're, you're able to do gradient, you're able to do everything, and it's great. If, it's, if your background's a little bit too light, you can darken it up, okay? If it's, if it's too dark, you can lighten it up. And all you have to do is just move your white slider, black slider, and away you go. But I normally don't spend more than five minutes, because I, I try to do the best I can, you know? But most of the time, in the years before, I shot nothing but JPEG. Any other questions? Eagles. You said you were going to talk about eagles. Oh, yeah, you wanted, you wanted to know how I shot eagles, okay? No, I don't have an eagle picture, but I'll show you how I did. Huh? Okay. This is not the lens I use, but, but the thing is, I want to show you more or less, uh, and I'm going to turn my back on you and sit down. Okay, and I'm sorry, that thing went to full power. Well, not full, it's half power. <laughs> I'm it sorry. Like it. It's not very powerful. Okay. okay, most of this is done in camera, okay? Uh, when I say most of it is back in the day, what we used to do is uh, follow it, follow the eagle. In your, in your, in your, you'd follow it like this. Okay, you'd see it and go. Okay, for me, those days are over. Like I say, that's not the lens I use. And, uh,
We got something? Yeah. Oh, Lord. I got to clean that uh, sensor. Okay. Now. Okay. When you're shooting, this is me, okay? When you have your tracking, your sense of track, tracking on, okay, in most cameras, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. And you think that your response will be better on five. Yes, it is. It is, it is good. The problem is, if it jumps too fast to another bird, or it jumps too fast to uh, another object. So if the bird's flying and it goes behind a tree and it comes over this way, it's going to stay on it if it's low because it, it won't respond that fast. That's just me. That's the way I do it. Some cameras will tell you, put it on five. Some people will tell you, put it on four. Okay? But that's how I have, my, that's how I have mine set, and I might move it all the way up to one. Okay? Then the next thing I would do is I, uh, I set my... Uh, this is, where, this is where we'll probably get a lot of, no, I don't do stuff like that. Okay, that, that is continuous focus, and I have it on focus only. Most people will put it on release, okay? The problem is, for me, I don't want to out of focus picture, okay? And I'm using tracking. So it's not going to lock on. When it locks on, then it's going to take the picture. I'm not going to take a picture if the bird, you know, I do get, I do get some out of focus because I'm too slow with it, but that's how, that's how it's done. Okay, that's the way I do it, okay? Now, maybe your camera doesn't have that, or maybe some people will tell you, no, don't do that, but that's how I do it. Okay, that, what's that? No, it's a Sony, okay? This is a Sony crop sensor, Okay. Uh, people will tell you that you shouldn't use a crop sensor. That's baloney, okay? Uh, micro four-thirds, that's the ticket, okay? And the reason why is because you see more of the bird. When I'm using my full-frame camera, I have, to, I have to go into crop mode. And you say, why are you going crop mode? It's a full-frame camera. Well, my full-frame camera only has 95% of the focus the tracking is on that sensor. But when I'm, in, when I'm in crop sensor mode, it's 100%. So if that bird, if I'm on it, he comes up and I don't catch him, I can come right back to him. That's, but I use this crop sensor one because the tracking on this one makes the other one look sick. That's how good this one is. Okay, another one too that you gotta look out for is you see uh, uh, this, okay? Now, some people, some people look at this, you know, on the, on the tracking. Like, I have it fixed on that tracking, okay? So, if I turn around and I, let's see if I can do it with this thing. I'm on that, I'm on, let's, let's say we're taking that right there, okay? You see how it tracks it a lot? You see what happens? See what happens? But I don't have it on bird tracking. I have a bird tracking, but that's not a bird. But anyway, you see how it moves? So I can get it outside the frame. I can go all the way out there and it's still on it. Okay? The next thing, and people, you know, I have, I have it set for, uh, I have it set for raw. Now, some people would tell you that up here in this, uh, this right here, this high, will tell you to put it somewhere like that. And I agree with them, okay? It's, this one only does 11 frames a second. Most cameras do probably 15 to 20, okay? I keep mine at 11. That's the highest this thing will go. Now, in your camera, it might work for you at this rate. It might work slower, but myself, I keep it all the way up, okay? And then I'm also, uh, I was using this for something else. Uh, yeah, so what you're gonna get, if it focuses, I'm gonna get, I got it just on focus. I don't have it on release. If it release, it would just take the picture. It's gotta focus. So it's gonna do it, okay? So you can just let it rock and roll. 
some people will, if you, if you have back foot and focus, this one's set up for that, but it doesn't work too good for me, okay? Which, what the good part about back foot and focus is you can burst the mode and still be locked on him. As in mine, when I'm shooting, if I'm shooting like this, okay, if I'm shooting like this, and I set up on it, I gotta re, it's gotta find it again, okay? Now, if back button focus, you get on it, you hit it, you let up on it, and it stays with it, okay? I recommend that you use what works for you, okay? Now, how do we find the birds? Well, normally I shoot with a little bigger lens than this, okay? And what I use is I use this. And I also use something that's not here. You'll see it if you sit out the lens. But this thing, this thing is, is called a dot sight. There it is. It's called a what? Excuse me. A dot sight. A dot sight? Yeah. You see, look through the thing. You see the little red light? See the little red thing? Okay. See it? Okay, now, what you have to do with that thing is you have to zero it on your camera. If I just stick it on a camera, I won't shoot nothing. So what I have to do is I have to find a place that those birds, like if I, if I have it with my other lens on it and I have a converter on it and I'm out there at 20, at 12, it's, it's gonna be different. So I have to line up where I think that's gonna work. Now, if the birds start coming toward me, I know, just like when you shoot a, a, a weapon, it, you're gonna have to, sh you're gonna have to come down. <laughs> even though, you know, I'm not even looking in here. I, I, I have another, you know, I, I do it now, but when I'm using that, I'm not even looking here because the birds are going too fast. By the time you get that thing up, where'd it go? Oh, he's gone, bud, <laughs> okay. You know, and that, that's, how, that's what I use. I used to use one for a pistol that sets up a little higher, but being that I got this rack on here, I needed that one. The one used for a pistol works just as well as that one, they're only like 20 bucks, okay? And it, you know, they're 20 and $10 for the thing to go on it. The only thing on that, I'll use it on that other camera if I, if I use it, if I do it. So you, you take the picture of uh, looking through that thing on the top. Exactly. Just, just push the button. Exactly, let and, it and, and let yet it let it roll, and then you have the tracking on it, and it just so happens because I don't have a bird in here, I have it set for birds. So if it goes, if there's a truck or something behind, it's not going to go after that. It's going to go after the bird. If it gets close enough, it's going to go after the eye. That's how it's done. You could, you know, put your camera up, take one picture, but you know, when I leave the dam over there, I probably have 1,300 pictures. Okay, because you just gotta rock and roll with it. <laughs> yeah, it's on Amazon. I think I bought that one at B, uh, B and H. Uh, it's a dot site. That one's made by, yeah, it's made by Olympus. It's only two people make it, Olympus and, and Nikon. Nikon's 179 and that one's 100 and a quarter. Red dot site. Red dot site. What's that? What do you mean? Yeah, no, but you see, and that, you're not, you don't have to worry, but the only reason you're using that is because the lens is so long. You can't find that. When you're up there, you know, I'm shooting it with a 600 lens. With that camera, it's 900. So, you know, by the time, where is it? This is finding it for me. I see it, and then I'm firing with it. Were you ever in the Army? Were you in the Army? Remember the crew served weapons where we had the thing on? That's how it is. You just follow it, walk it right in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Does it matter? Does it matter how far away? We're going to continue this conversation offline. Can y'all give me one moment to close out the meeting online since this probably makes no sense to them? <laughs> yeah, it won't. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Fred, for your wonderful presentation. Just a reminder that a uh, field trip this weekend to Conowingo Dam, and next week is Thanksgiving, so don't show up here. Um, we'll see you in two weeks for our mo uh, monochrome and color print contest with the theme of open. Uh, with the theme of open, and thank you everyone for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Good night.
For our new people, please see one of the officers for the club. We'll make sure uh, if you like what you see, uh, get on the mailing list, make sure you know exactly what's coming up, get you kind of folded in with all the other members that love to share and, and help each other out. And if you have any questions about the club, you know, we'll, we're happy to, to talk to you about it. But good night, everybody. We'll see you next uh, two weeks from now, I believe.